Hello and welcome to CX Today. I'm Sandra, I'm a technology journalist here, and I'm delighted to be joined by Kevin McGacky, Head of AI and Automation Solutions at Sabio. It's great to have you join us, Kevin. How are you doing today? Yeah, it's great. Thanks very much for having us along. I'm really excited to have a bit of a conversation around uh, our topic today. Yeah, no problem. It's really great to have you here today. And I'm very excited for today's session because uh, we're going to be talking about the importance of uh, customer intent and how it kind of uh, drives value and delivers positive results. So, Kevin, uh, to kick things off, um, could you please tell me why is capturing customer intent so important? Yeah, sure. And it's a, a question that quite often comes up when we have conversations with organizations today. And, you know, for many organizations, they have access to a wealth of information already around customer contact reasons. So businesses might have a, an IVR, for example, that allows them to customers to make a choice as to is it sales or service or what type of reason are they getting in touch about? Or they might have wrap up codes that agents will conclude the conversation with. And it allows the business some insights as to what type of topics are, are being discussed. But one of the challenges there is that it's so often that's business led. So the IVR options that you make available are ones that you as a business decided as the reasons customers contact. Or when you have a wrap up code, we know that the, ch the choices or selections again are business led and we rely on the accuracy of our agents to make sure they're dispositioning calls correctly. So. For us, understanding why a customer wants to call based on their call reason, so actually based upon the terminology or the wording and actually the reason that they want to call you, is really important to understand what's going on with your organisation and with your customer experience and with the reasons that customers feel that they need to get in touch with you rather than why you might prescribe that they get in touch. I think when we look at what value that comes into those intents and actually why captioning it really is important is you get to understand what the demand is on your organization and on your business. You know, when we look at capturing it at an intent level behind the customer, you go from maybe having five, six, seven IVR options that you offer up to having 100 or 200 reasons. So actually you're getting to such a granular level of contact that you can then make effective changes from. You can actually use this insight to really work out what's going on um, and I think the the other part to it is, as organisations, we you know in our industry we're all looking at how we can utilise um, AI, for example, and with the the IVR journey or with inside our customer engagements to try and be more efficient as a business. You know we're trying to address two problems at the moment. One is how do we remove some of that demand by automating it because we want to try and reduce the effort in the contact centre. The other side of it is that. You know, we know the attrition and the um, recruitment element behind contact centers at the moment is really under pressure. It's really difficult to have enough um, agents within the, the operations at the moment. So actually understanding your call reasons will allow you to address those demands coming in and look at how do you take them out? Not just how do you automate them when they come in, but how do you address them before they even become a call in the first place? Like that's a, a really important way of trying to help stem the demand coming in, which we know is just ever growing for everybody. And we're all just under increasing pressure to help us try and deal with those customer engagements, let alone deliver the best experience that we might want to try and get to. Right. Um, you mentioned IVR. So uh, when we were talking about the methods, uh, what kind of process do you recommend for capturing customer intent? Yeah, so one of the processes that we run at Savio is something called intent capture and analysis. So we run an eight-week program of work, and it's a fixed engagement. And essentially what we do is divert a small proportion of our customers or our clients' contacts, so their customers, and we will offer them up to an AI that essentially asks an open call steering question of, why are you calling today? And we grab the verbatim reason from the customer as to why they think they're calling. So going back to what we've just talked about, it gives you all of that meaningful intent call reason. So getting down to a really granular level. Now we run that just over eight weeks because it gives us a statistically accurate view as to the call reasons. And it generally provides us with enough data to make informed decisions about what we want to do going forward. And at the end, Throughout that eight week process, we're constantly evolving our intent model. So, you know, the call will come in, we'll ask why somebody's calling. 
And often, you know, because your customers may be used to dealing with your traditional IVR where, you know, press one to make a change or press two to make a payment, for example, you know, when they, they're used to saying, I just want to make a change. And actually telling you that somebody wants to make a change is, is fairly meaningless. It doesn't really give you any valuable insight because actually, if that's insurance, like, you know, they're looking to change their mileage to the additional drivers, for example, if it's in the travel sector, they'll be looking to change the surname on a booking or the flight time that's due. So when we then get to the detail of exactly what it is they want to change, you're then empowered to make informed decisions from that that allow you to say, great, we now understand that that person wants to make a change. It's a change to the surname on the booking and the booking is due next week. And actually that's a priority type call for you and you can then help in the future to work out how do you deal with that demand. But really our um, ICNA or intent capture analysis process is around getting that first step. It's just about let's make data-led decisions. So often as organisations, we have access to other data and therefore we make some assumptions perhaps as to why people call or, you know, we have the general, we know people must call about particular topics. But what you don't understand is all the nuanced reasons behind that. And actually, the, like I say, that granular level of detail allows you to really provide a service that's bespoke to those specific contact reasons. And actually, that's where you get to build out a contact centre and automation within your IVR and contact centre that allows you to treat those customers and actually allow them to self-serve or be redirected to a best contact channel, for example. Right. And um, speaking of value, um, how should a contact centre analyse customer intent to get the most value out, out of it? Yeah, the, when we run our ICE activity or intent capture analysis activity, we run that traditionally before the vast majority of our transformation programs. We use that essentially as a prefix to the work that we may then go ahead and do. And that's just because it gives everybody a clear direction to go in and it gives us the data and confidence that we're about to do the right thing. So you invest in the right areas in order to get the maximum ROI for what you're about to embark on. But there's the wealth of data that comes out of this really turns your IVR from being something that just root calls to agents into something that is, allows you to have real insight as to what's going on. And it's a level of insight that most organisations have not had previously. You know, that we're unlocking a real, real source of truth or data here. And so we have seen it utilised for process improvement. So how do you understand the correlation between calls that come in? So perhaps somebody who repeat calls, what, what is the correlation that occurred there? And is there something in the processes that could be improved to try and remove that repeat demand? Or perhaps you um, issued out correspondence and that's resulted in a call. How do you go about understanding where is the drivers behind the customer having to contact you? And getting that in their words means you really get to understand it. You understand that they think they had to call you for a particular reason based on an action or a previous step in the process that took place. We talk about how we can improve the skills side of it. So knowing at a granular level the contact reason, and it's not just a broader change bucket of calls, for example, it allows you to then send the customer to the right or the best possible agent to service that query. And actually what we've seen is when you onboard your agents into the contact center and they go through their initial six or potentially eight weeks training program to get fully upskilled, it's a lot of learning in there to do. Doing your call routing at an intent level, you know, under really understanding those call reasons, will allow you to actually embed those agents learning much easier and actually to phase out the upskilling or the training they get, which allows you to, you know, get the most out of your recruitment process as well. It also helps to improve the accuracy of routing. So we think about the fact that we offer our customers four or five options in our traditional IVR, then you're relying on the customer to know what button they should select, like how you're there, you're expecting your customer to understand how your organization de uh, defines the call reasons. So actually that's really difficult and they get it wrong. So we see internal transfers taking place. Doing it at an intent level means actually you take their words and you can route them to the right agent first time. And I guess the, so then I guess the, the last piece is, it allows you to go after the right automation. 
So by having that data, you know, of, of all those different call reasons and the volumes of those calls that come in and when they come in, you know, day, week, month, year, all the different trends that might exist, it allows you to go and target the right areas for your business to make sure, as I said earlier on, that you're getting ultimately the best value out of your investment. Right, so um, of course organizations want to know how uh, well investing in um, techniques that analyze customer intent will um, deliver results. So uh, could you tell me what positive results have Savio customers realized from actioning customer intent insights? Yeah, sure. And as I said, this is something that we, we tend to prefix on most of our transformational programs because I said it gives us the real insight and allows us all to go, you know, us along with our clients to go on the right journey together. And we've seen from our insights, you know, that as I said before, it's a wealth of data and we really are going to take the rest of the organization on this journey. It isn't just about taking the uh, telephony team or the IT team into the fold in order to understand call reasons. Actually, we'll bring the operational teams in, the digital teams. You really start to create a bit of a collaboration across the organization. And that's because the data and the insight you get from it is valuable to everybody. So what we see in some of the, the um, outputs that we've had so far, if we take one of the financial services organizations we work with, you know, they found that about 17% of their calls into their operation were a result of a letter or an email that they had sent the customer. So when we talk about process improvements and we talk about trying to deal with the demand that we receive into our organization, actually going a step beforehand and saying, might we have been the result of that call and what could we have changed in that correspondence to try and prevent the need for somebody to think that they have to call us when actually they didn't. And one of those examples um, for that organization was looking at their uh, requirement for from photographic ID. So a copy of your passport, essentially. And the letter isn't clear as to whether you have to provide that an in-date or an out-of-date passport. That small little wording change in our letter can help remove the need for those customers to place that call and ask that simple question. If we look at... Um, one of the home repair organizations that we work with, they've managed to now automate 13% of their claims, 13 percent of their calls, which are all related to claims. And actually they can now automate that process end to end. And they were able to do that by running this program, understanding the call reasons that come in, and then identifying what's the right target area for their operation. You know, where do they go and focus their investments in to begin with? And what they have found is great success in this automation, not just in the volume of demand that's removed, but a couple of other things is they have managed to improve their customer satisfaction scores. They're actually higher being treated within an IVR and through automation than they are than being treated by an agent. And they've also managed to remove minutes of call handling time because actually the process within the AI is very transactional. It gets to the point, it gets to the quickest resolution and we remove some of the more conversational elements that exist in our human-to-human -human type contacts. Again, we talked about the correlation of data between for first call resolution and actually where was repeat calls taking place. For one of the organisations we work with, we found that there were repeat calls for customers looking to um, make a complaint on their second call in following a process they had completed, and that was to, due to an admin fee that got applied as, as part of that process. And that organization found that actually it cost them more to service those second calls than it was value for them in charging an admin fee in the first place. So, you know, this is information that goes far beyond just dealing with the IVR and just trying to root calls and, and manage the, the customer call reason. It's about how do you go and transform the rest of the organization, give them this insight that they will never have seen before you know, I've worked in resource planning previously and actually having had access to this type of data, you'd be able to forecast your call demand much more accurately. You'd be able to treat those contacts as they came in and schedule the right agents at the right time. There's so much of a broader input that you can gain. You know, from we've seen from marketing teams, for example, that they can look at what the demand impact their marketing campaigns have. And actually, if you know 
the call propensity based upon our postcode, for example. So based on just a true sales environment, your propensity to call from a marketing campaign by region of the country or by postcode, then you can work out actually where's the cost, the cheapest cost to serve for your marketing campaign. So actually if I go and run it and the contacts from Manchester are less likely to call us than those based in Glasgow, then actually it tells us that we should focus more of our marketing efforts in that area because our cost to serve longer term will actually be cheaper. So there's such a broad wealth of insights and so many organisations take it in a different journey or a different path. And we see that a particular function will take the lead on that insight and really find value. And then very quickly, the other functions department start to realise, you know, we could really benefit from now understanding this. We've seen digital teams understand customers who have called and as a result of something wrong on the website. So they've found perhaps a, an error page that hasn't been able to complete or they've tried to do a process and it's not quite allowing them to put in particular details, resulting in a call. And our customers tell us when they call in, you know, I was trying to reset my password and it wouldn't accept my email address or it wouldn't allow me to tick the box. They give you those problems and it allows the rest of the business to go and make change. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me uh, today, Kevin, and uh, stressing the importance of uh, customer intent data in the contact center and in the CX in general. No, perfect. Thanks very much for having us, Sandra. It's great to talk about, really passionate about how we get our customers' voice to lead what organizations do. So the more we spread this, the better it is. <laughs> and that's it for today if you enjoyed our conversation feel free to like share and subscribe thank you for watching and see you in the next video